Are you looking for a deep space object to capture with your camera and telescope this fall? An astrophotography target that is so dynamic, so vivid, that your friends and family will say, you took that? Well, look no further. The Wizard Nebula is the perfect choice. In this video, I'll tell you exactly how I was able to capture this photo of the Wizard Nebula from my backyard and how you can too. Welcome back to the Astro Backyard. We've got a clear night on our hands and I'm itching to capture something new using my camera and telescope. Okay, maybe not exactly new. I've shot the Wizard Nebula before, but in a new way using some better gear. I'll use a computerized equatorial telescope mount, a big refractor, and a dedicated astronomy camera to get the job done. If you're looking at this setup behind me and thinking to yourself, okay buddy, yeah right, there's nothing special I'm doing with this setup that you couldn't do on a smaller scale. I take images using a star tracker and a camera lens all the time. The only advantage this one has on the Wizard Nebula is that it will appear bigger and in high resolution. Like many of the distant nebulae that I photograph on this channel, the Wizard Nebula is a collection of interstellar gas surrounding an open star cluster, NGC 7380 to be exact. It lives in the constellation Cepheus next to several other notable deep sky objects including the Cave Nebula and the Lion Nebula. It's a pretty dim object with an apparent magnitude of 7.2, so don't expect to see the Wizard Nebula through your telescope. Let that camera sensor do the work. My first attempt at the Wizard Nebula back in 2014 went okay, I guess. I mean, I was happy with the image, but it was just kind of small and red. I used my DSLR camera and a small 80 millimeter refractor to capture it. And there was just enough glow in that first two minute sub exposure for me to keep going. I could actually see the wizard shape starting to take form when I brought the data into Photoshop. And from that point, I was hooked. Since then, I've photographed it many times, but tonight will be with the biggest aperture yet. The Wizard Nebula is quite small, only about 25 arc minutes in size. For reference, the California Nebula is about 140 arc minutes long. So if you're using an 80 millimeter refractor like I did the first time I photographed the Wizard Nebula, don't expect to see a frame filling portrait of the wizard. A focal length of about 800 to 1000 millimeters is needed to get up close and personal with this guy. And that's exactly why I chose the Skywatcher Esprit 150 to photograph the wizard tonight. This six inch refractor has a native focal length of about 1000 millimeters, but I'm using a reducer to bring it back to about 800. The reducer also speeds the optics up from a sluggish f7 to a very respectable f5.4. Yes, I'll lose a bit of magnification, but I'll take that extra light gathering power. You probably didn't notice that I'm using a new camera tonight because every ASI camera looks exactly the same from the outside. But this one is special. Why? Because the ZWO ASI 6200MM Pro has a full frame monochrome sensor. You heard me. 9,576 pixels by 6,388. That, my friends, is about as good as it gets in terms of resolution in a monochrome astro camera. This camera has been on my wish list for over a year now, and I've finally got a loaner copy to test here in the backyard. Spoiler alert, whatever they want for it after the review is over, I'm buying it. Ash, yes. I'm buying another camera, okay? The moon is out in full force tonight, so I'll need to capture this object using narrowband filters. This is one of the best ways to approach the wizard because it emits some seriously intense gases in all three of the primary wavelengths. A broadband image in true color with a color camera is totally possible on this target, but you'll want to stick to moonless nights to capture it that way. 
I'm using big 48 millimeter Optolong SHO filters for this project tonight, and I'll explain why. Any new camera and telescope configuration will mean that you'll have to do some trial and error with backspacing, focus, and maybe filters. But when you have a full frame sensor, it gets even harder. For example, your inch and a quarter filter wheel, not happening. Just think about how much of that sensor you'd be cutting out with those filters. It's starting to get dark out now and I can feel the adrenaline starting to accumulate right into my bones. Rudy's ready to rock and yes, he knows exactly what's going on when he sees that telescope come out. There's something about dusk that gets my heart pumping. I don't know if it's the caffeine, the way it looks out here, or just the excitement of a new project. I feel alive. I'm coming for you, wizard. I'm gonna get you. I've just told the telescope to hop over to the Wizard Nebula in Cepheus. Because I use the ASI Air, I literally just have to click the object on my phone and the big bad EQ8 points right to it. I didn't even have to pull or align the telescope mount tonight because it was already ready to go from my last session. I've been using the Sky Atlas tool on the ASI Air app to run everything from my Star Adventure GTI all the way up to the EQ8. It just works and it's superior to every other method I've ever used, even the hand controller. Okay, my first four minute sub exposure has come in on the Wizard Nebula, so this should give you an idea in terms of size and again this is at 800 millimeters so i could probably use another 100 millimeters to get right in there but i'm happy with the orientation and the, the rotation of the wizard here so i'll continue shooting it through each filter and hope that it stays clear all night long i collected three hours of new high resolution data on the wizard with the new camera and sho Combined with my existing five and a half hours, that gave me a whopping 8.5 hours total. This is definitely my most epic Wizard Nebula yet. a computerized telescope mount 